Hello there, all you friends, true believers, and newcomers alike, and welcome to a Superfly Comics Guy haul video. It's been a few months since we've done one of these. I'm probably going to title this my January haul, but in reality, this is going to be like all the books I picked up between October and December of 2023, so we've got a decent amount to go through today. If you're new to my channel, this is going to be more of an overview of these books, not reviews, so less detail. If you want full reviews of the books, well then stick around, and when I do a full read-through of each of these, I will post a review. But you know, we'll still take a brief look, do a quick flip-through, get some first impressions, that's the idea here. Uh, as per tradition, we're going to start with, I do have one deluxe edition I want to show off first, and then we'll do the omnibuses in ascending order of my personal excitement for them. And remember, at 1k subs, I will be finally doing an omnibus collection tour. So if you're interested in that, you might want to consider subscribing. But if you enjoy this video at any point, you know how to show it, and feel free to leave your own thoughts about any of these books down below. But with that out of the way, let's dive into this very, very Batman-centric haul. Okay, so I mentioned we'll be starting off with one deluxe edition, and that is the dramatic appearance of the vigilante known as Red Hood here in the Batman Under the Red Hood Deluxe Edition. Let's dive into this. All right, so Batman Under the Red Hood. Man, am I excited that they made a deluxe edition for this. We got this lovely image here by the artist Jock, sort of doing an homage to the Batman Death in the Family story. Here is the spine. It's thicker than I was expecting, honestly, because this isn't that long of a story. And here we go, Red Hood Origin. So the back of this book, this little blurb here, it straight up tells you who the, what the identity of the Red Hood is, so I don't really consider that a spoiler. He's been a, the character's been around for a decent amount of time, so I will talk a little bit about that. But I'm not gonna like throw in uh, obvious spoilers into this into this overview here. But we got a cover price here of fifty dollars U.S., sixty six Canadian. I was getting a little worried about uh, this book initially because when it came out, it vanished from in stock trades pretty quickly. But luckily, it came back. So let's see what do we have here. Was that a wraparound? Oh, damn. Very nice. All right, let me stretch the book real quick and then we'll take a look at that. All right, so there is the eye we got after stretching. That's honestly pretty good for a deluxe edition given that they're usually shorter books. Uh, I'm a little worried about how the glue was applied here, but hopefully it's just cosmetic, nothing to worry about. Uh, the build quality is seeming pretty okay. They're not super glossy pages. Um, they're not particularly thick either, but no. I'm not noticing too much bleed through anyway, so it seems to be doing the job well enough. Let's go back to the beginning here. Got some black bookend pages. I was noticing page numbers as well when I was flipping through, which is great to see. And I think, yeah, you got a table of contents too. Okay, damn, DC took this pretty seriously. Now, I got a confession to make. Uh, and no, that is not a Foo Fighters reference. <laughs> I actually already own the trade paperback of this story. Because there was like a thick trade that has like the full uh, Under the Red Hood saga that I have in trade paperback format. So you might be thinking, then why did you go for this? Why did you double dip? Well, there's a few reasons. I love the animated movie adaptation of this. That's actually where I experienced this story for the first time. And then I read the comics afterwards. But yeah, that movie, oh, that's one of my favorite animated Batman movies ever. Um, but I also really like the story here. Um, I wanted to upgrade to the oversized art here in this deluxe edition compared to the smaller trade paperback size because I do think the art is really, really well done in this book. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, this deluxe edition has some additional issues in here that the trade paperback uh, does not. So I'm actually getting some extra story content here, which is cool. Uh, speaking of story though, what is this about? Well, to give you the gist, I don't want to go into too many spoilers, but a new lethal vigilante appears in Gotham known as Red Hood. 
And yes, I did say lethal. He's challenging the mobs. He's taking over control. And naturally, you know, Batman's going to take notice of this. He's not so much, he's not very keen on the whole uh, killing. He's very adamant about his no killing rule. So, and well, Batman obviously comes into conflict with this vigilante, but he's discovering that this Red Hood guy knows a lot about Batman. Almost too much. And as the back of the book indicates, oh, I love that design from Mr. Freeze. As I was saying, as the back of the book indicates, uh, the identity of Red Hood is actually Jason Todd. If you don't know who Jason Todd is, he was Batman's second Robin. So not Dick Grayson, not the first Robin, but the second Robin, who actually died in the 70s, I believe it was, in the, well, famous by now story, Death in the Family. So Jason Todd was dead for the longest time, but this is the story where he came back as the character Red Hood. And he's like, you know what? Batman's way just doesn't work. I'm, when, I'm gonna, when I stop these criminals, I'm going to make sure they don't come back. So he challenges Batman, um, well, not just physically, not just in combat, but, you know, philosophically, his methods. And it makes for a really interesting story. This, this story goes all, to all sorts of places. Um, I think the movie, surprisingly, that adapted this actually did it better. But I still, if you're a fan of the movie, the animated movie, like, there's so much dialogue in that movie that was just, like, stripped one-to-one -one from this story. So you'll enjoy finding a lot of similarities and comparing and contrasting. And again, like I said, the art is just so awesome. So definitely looking forward to rereading this at some point. Because this, to me, is just, like, Red Hood at his peak, at his most interesting. I find it a little awkward when he sort of becomes a member of the Bat family way later on. Because I just, again... I think he's at his coolest when he's allowed to be a wild card, when he's allowed to um, be lethal against against his enemies. That all kind of, that sort of complex nature sort of gets muddied when he becomes a member of the Bat family and he has to sort of be restricted by Batman's rules. I don't know. I just, I like him when he's sort of this lone gun here. But anyway, let's move on. All right, this next book is the one I probably know the least about in this whole haul, and that would be the Dark Knight's Metal Omnibus. Let's dive in. All right, here we are, the Dark Knight's Metal Omnibus. This is the standard edition cover. Um, there is also a direct market variant available for this book, which DC has recently started to do for some of their books. And man, holy production quality, Batman. It's got it's a very interesting sort of matte finish to this dust jacket. Reminds me of like the matte finishes you see on some cars. <laughs> you got this like shiny, reflective... Uh, metallic sort of uh part for the for the titles and the and the creators that's very interesting the spine also continues that design i don't know if you can tell yeah it's meant to look like metallic and then the back the dark knights are coming and with them the true father of batman <laughs> interesting yeah i really don't know much about this story um, here you can see the, uh, cost of all that production quality, though, because this book costs 150 US, 195 Canadian. Um, that's one of the many reasons I was very hesitant to pick this up when it first came out, um, because that's a pretty expensive price for what is, I think, somewhere between 700 and 800 pages for an omnibus. That's, that's pushing it a little bit, but at one point, uh, this was on Amazon for like 46% off or something. So I was like, ah, screw it. That's a better price. I'm curious enough about the story. Might as well check it out. Um, yeah, I got some very interesting designs here. Is that Red Death? I think that's who that is. Um, anyway, hold on. Let me show you under the dust jacket here. Yeah, look at that. Following through again with that metal theme. It's made of med, meta, meta, metal. It's made of metal. It's made of metal. 
This one's a little bit more, little bit more glossy, a little bit more reflective. Dark Knight's metal. And then the uh, metal on the back there as well. So let me stretch this one and then I'll be right back. Here we are. Uh, I was expecting pretty tight binding on this and to be honest, it is pretty tight, but that eye is bigger than I was expecting. There's certainly gutter loss in this book, but you know, it's it seems to be manageable. I don't know. We'll see how it is closer to the beginning or the end of the book. Um, the pages, I would say, are thicker than the Under the Red Hood Deluxe Edition. This definitely feels more in line with what I would typically expect from a, a DC Omnibus. Nice thick pages. Yes, the binding is tighter, but then you get better build quality with the pages, so I don't know. It depends on what you prioritize here. But yeah, you definitely feel the... Uh, the cost of that uh, increased build quality here, given that higher price. Uh, yeah, nice silver looking bookend pages here. Let's see, do we have a table of contents? Yeah, okay, we do. But I wasn't noticing page numbers, so that might be... Let's see, can we find any page numbers? No, it doesn't look like it. God, that's such a pet peeve of mine. It's like, why? Why give me a table of contents if you're not going to give me page numbers, but... Anyway, I guess it all depends on how the story reads. Um, so yeah, I gotta be honest, I don't really know much about this story. I was curious about it because um, it's written by Scott Snyder and penciled by Greg Capullo, the same creative team that worked on the Batman New 52 series, which, uh, you know, I enjoyed for the most part. Um, Greg Capullo's artwork is something else, man. He's so talented. And Scott Snyder, you know, previously being a horror writer, bringing some horror influences to the Batman mythos, which I think is a brilliant idea. Um, but yeah, I know this deals with the... This introduces the concept of the dark multiverse. God, I don't remember which year this story was coming out in. It's somewhat recent. It's definitely in the, in the 2010s. I just don't know exactly when. Um, but yeah, the Dark Multiverse, um, I think it involves, like, evil versions of Batman. Um, so those are some of the characters you were seeing on the back of the dust jacket, for example. And I know that, you know, Batman has to team up with the Justice League and other heroes to sort of fight back against this threat. But beyond that, I gotta be honest, I really, I really don't know much about this story. My brother probably would know more than I do. Um, I think they did some version of this story in the CW shows. Oh, yeah. Speaking of a horror influence, there's the Batman Who Laughs. Probably the most notable character to come out, uh, come out of this event. Very, very creepy, like, jokerized version of, uh, or alternate version of Batman. Yeah, my brother would probably know way more about the story than I do. Um, I do know about Red Death. I think he told me about that. It's like a evil Flash version of Batman, which honestly looks freaking epic. Love that. The art is something else, man. Holy crap, look at this. Earth 52. Jesus. Yeah, if nothing else, the art looks very, very enjoyable. And for the price I got it for... I don't have much to complain about, do I? But yeah, let's move on. All right, up next we have a story that I know the second least about in this haul, and that is Batman Eternal. Let's take a look at this. And there we are, taking a look at the dust jacket for this omnibus. It's freaking gorgeous, man. This is a piece by Jason Fabok, who has a really, really cool style. I do like this cover. Um, I don't think there are any alternate covers for this, for this omnibus. Um, let me take a look at the spine. This is a thick book. I don't know the exact page count, but it feels like it's over a thousand. Um, Commissioner Gordon on the wrong side of the law. Uh, we got a cover price of 125 US, 163 Canadian. I picked this up for 52% off on in stock trades when this reprint came out. Let me take a look under the dust jacket here. 
Ooh, there we are. Looks like we got a wrap around. So you know the drill. I'm gonna take a stretch and then we'll take a look at that. And there we are, done stretching. I'm really impressed with the eye on this omnibus. Cause this is a big book, but look at how big of an eye we're getting. So hopefully that should help out with the, you know, minimizing the gutter loss as much as possible. I wasn't noticing page numbers or anything like that. Um, the paper itself, um, this is the most matte paper so far. This is even less glossy, even more matte than the uh, Red Hood Deluxe Edition we took a look at. But there is some gloss to it. Pages still feel pretty okay. I remember when this reprint came out, some people were like <laughs> throwing a fit, it seems like, that the pages weren't glossy enough or something like that. I don't know. Personally, I think that's a little bit silly. The art still shows up really nice. Perfectly legible. Doesn't feel, doesn't feel too cheap. Thickness feels okay. I'm not noticing bleed through. So I'm pretty okay with this paper. Um, let's go back over here. There we go. Start taking, oh wait, no, no, no. Let's take a look at the wraparound cover. That's what I said I was gonna do. Oh yeah, damn. Seems like a Bat Family book, eh? Because we got Red Robin, we got Batgirl, we got Batwoman, Red Hood. Um, can't tell who that is. Jim Gordon. Oh God, what's her name? I don't remember. Spoiler, is that? No, no, that can't be. Okay, there is Batwing, I think his name is. Got a lot of characters seemingly in this story. Okay, now we can start flipping through. Got some black bookend pages. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. This DC reprinted this book in 2023, at the end of 2023. But before that, like this book was one of the most sought after DC omnibuses out there, I think. Anytime like a, a, a copy would pop up, you'd see people selling it for like several hundred dollars. And I'm just like, Jesus. Is this story that good? It's like, why do people want this so badly? But then, you know, eventually DC reprinted it, which I figured they would, given the demand. So I don't know. Don't overpay for your, for your books, people, I guess is the moral of the story. Speaking of the story, like I said, I don't know too much about it. I think it kind of centers around, as the back of the book said, like, Jim Gordon ends up in jail. So... Batman loses his sort of main man on the inside, kind of, on the police force. You know, the commissioner. Um, so it's kind of interesting, the idea to me, when Batman is kind of against the law in a way. They're, like, kind of unsure about him. They uh, view him as, I guess, a liability. A, a risk, if you will, an uncertainty. Um, so I kind of like that. Um, beyond that, I don't really know what this story is about. I think the mob gets involved at some point. As the wraparound cover looked, it definitely seems like a more of a Bat Family book. Oh god, Professor Pig. Such a friggin' creepy villain. Catwoman's here too. The art looks fantastic. Um, like I said, Jason Fabok. I don't know if he does all of it. Um, I think he definitely starts out the book though. Um, he's got a very, very interesting style. I don't remember who uh, he studied under. Who was his mentor? Was it David Finch or, or Jim Lee? I, I can't remember. You can let me know in the comments, I suppose, if you know the answer to that. I don't think Jason Fabok stays on the book the whole time, though, because I was noticing, like, uh, some art by Jock as well in here. Like, yeah, that's definitely Jock artwork right there. The way he draws faces and stuff. Where's that? Where's that Dustin Nguyen? Oh God. <laughs> I'm getting confused. A few moments later. Okay, I was right. I just checked. I caught myself. It's definitely Dustin Nguyen here, not Jock. <laughs> my bad, but hey, at least I caught my mistake in the end. But yeah, if nothing else, you're definitely getting good art in here as well. Um, it's funny though, it's like this book was so high in demand, but it's when I hear reviews on this story, people generally seem to be mixed. It's like, 
I don't think I've met anybody that was like blown away by this story. But I also don't think anybody like particularly hated it. So I don't know. It's kind of funny how that works sometimes. Comic collectors, I suppose. We're a weird bunch. All right, this next one is shamelessly appealing to my nostalgia. The Batman Adventures Omnibus. Hell yeah, baby, let's go. Oh, look at that. Easily my favorite cover out of all of these books today. Man, I think it's the only one available, but really, do you need another cover? Look at how awesome this is. This is the image I always think of when I think of the Batman animated series. Let's take a look at the spine. Again, reuse the same image for the spine. The Batman Adventures Omnibus. And then the back, the legendary animated series. Hell yeah, it is. Comes to comics. Got a cover price of 150 US, 195 Canadian. So this one is on the pricier side as well, but it's got a bigger page count than that uh, Dark Knight's Metal Omnibus we looked at. Let's see. Take a look under the dust jacket. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh, look at that artwork. How can you not love that? Such an iconic style for the show. Oh, recreated perfectly here. And it's a wraparound too. Okay, so I'll stretch this and we will definitely take a look at that. God damn, boy. Take a look at the size of that eye. That is massive. Especially for a DC book. Very impressed. Oh man, look at this art. Got page numbers too. I'll check for a table of contents in a second here, but man. Oh man, I could just, I could stare at this art all day. This takes me right back to watching that Batman animated series show. Let's see, do we get a table of contents? I hope so. Uh, whoops, went a little bit too far. Oh, we get a table of contents. That's perfect. It's weird how sometimes you get a table of contents and page numbers, sometimes you just get one, sometimes you get neither. There's no consistency. Come on, people. Figure it out. Let's take a look at that wrap around again. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. That Bruce Tim style artwork. Got Harley Quinn and Catwoman and Killer Croc and Man Bat and Riddler and Poison Ivy and Clayface and Batgirl. Of course, the man himself, Batman. Let's flip through here a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Even the bookend pages are impressive. There's the Phantasm, too. We'll talk about that in a bit. Man. Oh. This is special. This is really something special. Probably one of my most anticipated books from the last year that came out. This is still... Batman Animated Series is still my favorite Batman show, and it did so much for the character. You know, it's accessible enough to still technically qualify as a kid's show, sure. But it was mature enough for adults to enjoy it, too. Some really serious storylines in there, and some really well-written characters. I mean, just think about how they, what they did with Mr. Freeze. How it, the show was the first appearance of Harley Quinn. Think about how big she is now as a character. What they ended up doing with Nightwing eventually. God, just so cool. And, you know, eventually kind of spawning its own extended universe starting with the Batman animated series and then moving over to Superman the animated series, which, I, to be fair, I didn't watch too much of. Um, but then the Justice League shows as well. Oh, those were incredible. Those are still my, like, definitive versions of those characters. Whenever I think of, like, characters from the Justice League, it's always from this universe that I think of. And if I understand this omnibus correctly, it's not just rehashing episodes of the Batman animated series. These issues are entirely separate, 
supplementary stories to the TV show. So all of this stuff in here should be completely new to me, which is so exciting. Just a couple years ago, I did a rewatch of all of the episodes of Batman the Animated Series, and oh, that was such a trip. So now, to be able to have just completely brand new content from this universe is just so exciting to me. Uh, to be fair though, it's not entirely new, because this omnibus, I believe, also contains the comic adaptation of the Mask of the Phantasm animated movie. Man, if you haven't seen that animated movie, that is one of the best Batman movies ever made, still to this day. Not best animated movies, best Batman movies, period. Just, oh, so much good writing in that movie. I mean, that one scene with, with Bruce Wayne and he's all like, I didn't count on being happy. Oh my God, that moment, so good. And just rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. The voice of Batman, bringing him to life in a way nobody else really could. But yeah, just flipping through this, this really is shooting up very far close to the beginning of my uh, most anticipated reads or books that I really, really want to read as soon as possible. This looks awesome. All right, and now time for my most anticipated book in this haul. If you know me, or if you're a fan of the channel, this should come as no surprise to you at all. That it's Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 3. Hell yeah, baby. Let's go. All right, Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 3. Probably my most anticipated book of last year, just because this is my favorite comic series. Getting it collected in, omnib in omnibus format is just so exciting. Um, this is the direct market cover, or one of them, uh, featuring Moon Knight. There is another direct market cover with Carnage, and also a standard edition cover. So you have three covers to choose from for this book. Um, I went with this one because... I already have the Carnage cover for Volume 2, and then Volume 1, I have the Venom cover, so I wanted to mix it up a little bit. Went with the Moon Knight cover, and it seems like a lot of people had the same idea, because I think this one was the first cover to sell out. Which, I wasn't expecting, but hey, you can't always predict these things. There's the spine. Pretty clean design, pretty slick. Got the cover gallery on the back here. I always love to see that. Classic. Uh, cover price of 125 US, 156 25 Canadian. I picked it up for, I think it was 40% off on in stock trades when it came out. Let's take a look under the dust jacket, see what we have. Oh, okay. Got this blue wraparound design here. Let me uh, stretch the book and we'll take a better look at that. Wow, I almost feel like I didn't have to stretch this at all. Look at the, how big that eye is. That's insane. It almost feels like this book came pre-stretched. Look at that. We're getting like no gutter loss. Um, I think this book was printed at the Mega Printer in Turkey. So not the notorious iMac one that we've all had our occasional complaints about, shall we say, but the there's this new one they're using called the Mega Printer, which seems to be churning out some pretty good uh, build quality omnibuses for the most part. That's exciting. Let's take a look at that wraparound cover. It's... It's alright. I, I feel like I would have liked it more if it didn't have like the solid blue tint everywhere. I feel like if they just stuck with the regular colors, this would have looked better. But anyway. Let's have a look on the inside here. Black bookend pages. Some lovely Mark Bagley artwork to greet us. Man, it's so cool. Arguably my favorite Spider-Man artist. I mean, there's been so many good ones, but... Ugh. It's hard to go wrong with some classic Mark Bagley. Yeah, man, my favorite comic series. The series that got me into comics in the first place. Um, if you're not familiar with the Ultimate Universe, I'll give you the quick little elevator pitch here. It basically focuses on a younger Spider-Man, a less experienced Spider-Man. Takes place in an alternate universe, focuses on his high school years, 
And because it's an alternate universe, you have many, many unique interpretations of already established characters. For instance, this is where, this universe is where we got the Nick Fury, uh, I mean, the Sam Jackson version of Nick Fury. That ended up later showing up in the MCU, for example. Um, but this volume gets particularly exciting, if I remember correctly. This is where the Ultimate Universe really kind of starts to expand a little more. Because um, we're getting the Hobgoblin saga here. You can see him in this epic fight scene with Spider-Man. Um, a lot more street-level uh, characters start to appear in this volume, like... Like Moon Knight you saw on the cover, and Black Cat, and Elektra, and Daredevil, and Silver Sable. All these hand-to-hand -hand combatants that uh, Spider-Man eventually ends up interacting with. Oh god. The, <laughs> the I remember the Black Cat inter interaction, some of them being particularly humorous. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the um, there's a... You get ultimate the ultimate version of Deadpool in here too who is very, very different from your main universe, Deadpool. I was pretty surprised when I read this for the first time. They, uh, they really make some interesting changes to Deadpool. Um, and one of the biggest things that happens in here is you get the ultimate version of the Clone Saga. Now, I know I might have triggered some people by saying Clone Saga because it's that infamous story convoluted story from the 90s that turned a lot of people off. But hey, if you want to read a pretty good version of the Clone Saga, then you should check out this book, because this will give you the ultimate version of the Clone Saga. You know, different clones of Spider-Man showing up and causing all sort of mix-ups, all sort of chaos, to be honest. But the way they handle it in here is way, way better. Way more succinct, way more focused, way less messy than the 90s version of the Clone Saga. But yeah, man, how can I not be excited about this? Look at the art. Ugh. Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley. What a team. And I'm hearing a lot of good things about the new Ultimate Spider-Man series that's uh, currently been started up again with uh, Jonathan Hickman and Marco Cacchetto, I believe. Oh, so really excited about that. Seems like whenever Marvel is in a particularly rough spot with Spider-Man, they just bring in the Ultimate Universe. <laughs> it seems to be a pretty successful formula, eh? But that'll do it for the haul today, guys. If you stuck through the whole thing, thank you so much. Let me know if you have any questions about any of these books. Let me know which ones you found the most interesting. Uh, if you're picking any of these up, or if you have done so already, or if you have any recommendations about which ones I should read and review first, you can leave those down below. But thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I hope to catch you in another video real soon. So you have yourself a great day. I've been Superfly Comics Guy, and until next time, you keep reading. Bye-bye, guys.